thanks to the Geo Awesomeness uh, team. Thanks, Alex and Muthu, for having me here. My name is Rohit Singh. I'm the director of SRE's R&D Center in New Delhi. So that's the center that's focused on, on AI and machine learning. And our mission is to get uh, all the benefits of AI, machine learning, and deep learning, and enable our users to adopt the latest and greatest technologies and solve their real problems. So with that uh, quick intro, let's get started. Uh, you know, our, uh, our primary focus these days is deep learning because that's where, uh, you know, in every field, deep learning is giving great results. And when we look at geospatial deep learning, it's, it's uh, not just about imagery. There's so many kinds of data sets that uh, you work with. Uh, you know, even when you're talking about imagery, there's, there's satellite, there's aerial, there's drone imagery, there's oriented imagery, uh, thing, you know, uh, imagery taken from the street view level. Uh, there's, there's videos, there's uh, not just imagery, there's, there's LIDAR, there's bathymetric data or raster data. Uh, there could be uh, point cloud data. So applying uh, deep learning to that, or there could be data sets, you know, of course the, the um, GIS data sets with tabular uh, features, uh, feature layers, or you could have text, uh, unstructured text. There's so many uh, tasks that you can do to extract information from these kinds of data sets. And we've added support for a number of these tasks that are listed on the right here. And, uh, you know, talking broadly, if you were doing this, uh, let's say about a year ago, you would typically be using libraries like TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, of course, using the ArcGIS platform, we make it very easy to use these libraries. And we've also built our own library for geospatial deep learning that's called ArcGIS.learn. But even using our tools, even using ArcGIS Pro or Image Server, you can apply these models uh, on, on these data sets to derive the, the information from them. So with that quick intro, uh, I want to quickly dive into a few demos uh, because you know that's where uh, uh, we really learn about what's going on. So in, in this scenario, this is uh, using ArcGIS Pro, which is our desktop uh, flagship GIS software. And we are looking at Malibu in Southern California that's an area that was affected by the devastating Woolsey fires in 2019. And uh, in, in our area of interest, there are over, over 11,000 uh, buildings within the fire perimeter. And this example is coming from USAA, which is one of the largest insurance companies in the United States. Uh, they, they needed to quickly identify which houses are damaged by the fire so they can settle claims uh, in a fast manner. So uh, what, what they did is, you know, of course it's painstaking to go and look at each house, but a small fraction of those houses uh, were labeled and uh, they marked out what the, the damaged houses look like after the fire shown in red and what those undamaged houses look like. And these serve as training data to train a deep learning model. Uh, ArcGIS includes tools. So there are these image analyst tools, which, which have these uh, deep learning tools that allow you, our users, to train their own deep learning models on their data and apply them for inferencing. So you could take this data, you could export it into small image chips using the export training data tool. Uh, this is because, you know, deep learning works on, it's, you know, it's, uh, it runs on GPUs that have limited memory and the model can only look at small images at a time. So using our export training data tool, these are the kinds of uh, images that are generated and each image ha has a label of whether this one is damaged, uh, undamaged, this is damaged. They do come with their context. Uh, and, and using that, we can train our, our deep learning model. So there's a tool for that. It's very easy, you just point it at the training data and uh, 
and it produces a model for you. The only e uh, you know, parameter that you really need to set is how long you want to train it for, that the max epochs. But if you know a little bit more about deep learning, we do give you the option to pick from a number of deep learning models for the task at hand and also give you uh, a few settings, the most important hyperparameters that can help you get the best results. So using this data uh, and the trained model, uh, USAA was able to correctly classify all 11,000 buildings. Let's uh, look at the results. So here you can see the results of that model. Uh, as you can see, uh, the houses that are still standing are, are labeled correctly by the model. They are in green and the damaged houses are in red. Now, another way that many data scientists like to use deep learning is through Python and notebooks. And for those users, we also have support within the ArcGIS platform. And uh, this is a notebook that shows how you can use ArcGIS API for Python, uh, where we've built this helper library to easily train deep learning models. So basically, uh, we just pointed at the data that was exported in ArcGIS Pro. We can look at that data. This shows several examples of houses that are damaged and those that are not. And then you can train a number of different models. In this case, we are simply classifying each geographical feature uh, into one of two categories, damaged or not. And we've really simplified how you can find the optimum hyperparameters like the learning rate and, and fit the model by just passing those in. Um, we provided tools for that. Once you've trained your model, you can look at the results and on the top are the, is the ground truth and on the bottom is the prediction. As you can see, they match uh, quite nicely. In fact, this model gave over 99% accuracy uh, because that's really how good deep learning is. Uh, now it's considered better human vision in, in many tasks, at, le at least like image classification. You can then save out the model and, and go and do that inferencing in, uh, in ArcGIS Pro. Or if you were to do, you know, if you've got a large area, you can use uh, multiple image servers and scale it out. Now, we were able to do this because we had the data of the building footprints and we were able to mark some of them as damaged and, and some as not. But what if we had missing data or areas which did not have uh, building footprints? Uh, well, we can train another deep learning model that can learn to predict the shapes of these buildings, the building footprints, given the data that we already have. And that's a UNET model that Frank spoke about. Uh, and I'll quickly show you a notebook for that. You could do the training in Pro. You can also do it in, in the notebook. So here is the data. In this case, the buildings are shown in the, the pink color. Uh, here we are creating a unit model, giving it that learning rate, telling it to train. And on the left is the ground truth. On the right are the predictions. And you can see how nicely the model has learned to find where the buildings are. In fact, this building was not even in our labor training data, but the model was able to learn from it and is able to, to find that. So with this model, uh, we can come back uh, and look at the results of the, the deep learning model to find building footprints. Now, a unit model is basically a pixel classification model. To post-process those results, we've got tools uh, to regularize those building footprints. And this is what uh, the, the, the results from the building footprints looks like. And when I see results like these, uh, an AI model being able to create such detailed footprints, uh, I really get, get goosebumps. Now let me show you a few other uh, scenarios uh, where we've used deep learning and why really we are using <laughs> deep learning. So let's take this example of uh, faster RCNN, one of the most accurate object detection models. And this is a scenario to detect uh, swimming pools in imagery. 
and on the left is the ground truth and on the right are the predictions and for such a model you can see right off the bat that model gives great results at finding these swimming pools in fact the bounding boxes of uh, on the right are better uh, and it even finds the pools that are missing uh, in the training data so uh, deep learning is at that stage when it's no longer science fiction it's very usable and uh, you get very good results that you can directly apply so when you know with these kinds of results when we uh, query for the metrics of how good the model is doing and it tells us that it's at, at 83% we know what's really going on is uh, the human is at, at a lower accuracy and and that's why the ai is showing as if it were, were at a uh, lower accuracy the computer is usually right another model that we have is yolo you might have heard of it it's known as you only look once and this is a scenario to detect uh, cars in satellite imagery now one of the interesting things about the yolo model is that it's pre-trained on pictures of everyday things so given a photograph uh, it can already tell that there's a truck in it there's bicycle and there's a dog so what we did is uh, we took the yolo model and we connected it to uh, a number of camera feeds from these in, uh, traffic intersections uh, in in a city and these are the results from that that model as uh, as we get the video feed we feed it into the yolo model it tells us how many vehicles uh, and of different kinds how many pedestrians we can see we can count them and we can update a dashboard with that information in in real time now where it gets interesting is uh, in this scenario where we did this for over 900 uh, intersections in in london and here are the results we ran it for two days and we can see patterns such as what is the predominant activity at that intersection and we can start seeing anomalies such as when there's a lot of pedestrians where they're not supposed to be so that's an example of using uh, what we call as oriented imagery in fact uh, videos uh, another interesting you know question that i saw was can you look below the the surface and in this scenario, uh, it's from our user conference recently where we detected shipwrecks from bathymetric data. So uh, it basically, you know, looking at the NOAA charts, we only had two shipwrecks, but clearly we can see a lot more in, in the bathymetric data. This is one band uh, data and using the hill shade functions, we were able to generate that, uh, you know, that, that colored output. And then you can apply deep learning models on it. So starting from, you know, creating your training data sets uh, where you label some examples to training, uh, you know, exporting the data to training the model, all of that is available within ArcGIS Pro. And here are some of those results. And using that, we can update the, the nautical charts. Uh, this one is interesting and it's about taking AI to the edge. So here we are doing a, a field survey of which plants are at, at different locations. It's like data collection workflow. And basically, you know, we need to take a picture there and we need to find what species of plant there is. That's typically the case with many survey applications. But you could take uh, AI and help solve this problem. So given this data set of plant leaves and flowers, uh, it's an open data set. Uh, we trained uh, a simple image classifier model. This is an open data set with over 260,000 uh, species of plants. And this time while training the feature classifier, we are saying that the back end is TensorFlow. And that allows us to create a model that we can deploy on the mobile phone. Here are the results from that model. Given a picture of a plant, it's able to tell its species. And we can save it out as a TensorFlow Lite model. 
that we can then deploy on our uh, surveying application, which is known as Survey123. There's a, a, a current uh, beta going on where you could take these models, deploy them on the phone. This is what it looks like. Uh, once the model is deployed, the surveyor can go out in the field and instead of scrolling through hundreds of plant species in a pick list, you just point your camera at, at the plant and it is able to identify what that plant species is, get its location and, and your survey is complete. So taking AI to the edge in a purely disconnected manner and, and doing these field surveys. Now this data is sent back to the server and uh, we can get these web applications that show uh, the results of our tree inventory. And that's how we can uh, solve typical problems that many of you have. Now, one of the things that I'm very excited about is that we have recently made it even easier. So you don't even need to train your own model. Uh, we've created ready to use geospatial AI models. And uh, there are three models that are there out there currently, one to detect building footprints, another to find the land cover classification, and yet another one to do tree point classification and 3D point clouds. So let me quickly show you some results from our building footprint model across various geographies. This model works with RGB imagery from a number of different sensors. It could be drone, aerial or satellite imagery. And you can see how it's working and giving great results, not just in the US uh, on which data we trained it on, but even in quite different geographies such as uh, the Palm Island in Dubai, where you can see these results. Next, uh, let's look at our tree point classification model. And uh, basically given a point cloud, it's able to identify which points belong to, to trees. And here are some results for different geographies around the world. These models are very generalizable. They work across large geographic areas. So here are results from, from the UK. Here we are looking, uh, going to jump to Finland. There's a lot of uh, vegetation here on the right hand side. You can see it from the elevation. So all points belonging to trees are, are labeled in the green color. So let's look at how you could use this model to go from a raw point cloud such as this to a finished 3D scene complete with 3D models of buildings uh, and, and trees uh, just using uh, ArcGIS as, as the workflow. So we start with using the point CNN model. That's our uh, point cloud classification model. Given the raw point cloud, we were able to find all points belonging to buildings, to ground and to the vegetation. By using spatial clustering of the tree points, we are able to find uh, the, the height and the diameter of each tree and using that, we can find the closest tree species and uh, uh, use City Engine to create a 3D model uh, of, of our scene. So here are some results from that model. And if I were to turn on the, the, the points from the model, you can see how closely they are matching what uh, each, each point cloud for each tree is matching uh, its model. So that was just a you know quick run through through several of the deep learning models in, in ArcGIS. We've got blog posts that you can read about. There are about 15 models now for a variety of tasks. And if you want to learn more, uh, I'd encourage you to go to our, our Medium uh, blog at medium.com slash geoai. So that was a quick uh, whirlwind tour of the different kinds of things that you can do by taking deep learning and applying it to a number of different uh, geospatial data sets.